Let's now delve into matters of tourism because as Ghana opens to tourists amid the ease of travel restrictions, the Ghana Tourism Authority under the sector ministry is leaving nothing to chance on quality service delivery. By this, the sector skills revitalization scheme under the Ghana Cares of Batampa program has been launched, uh, of course, for the training of inspectorate officers of the Ghana Tourism Authority. 10,000 inspectors from all 16 regions will, through the quality assurance and service delivery program, be trained on best practices at various tourist locations over 18 months. Akwesi Ajiman is chief executive of the Ghana Tourism Authority. We work very closely with the national security, and that is why they are part of uh, the training that we are embarking on under the Ghana Cares project. This we are doing this week, uh, as you could tell, uh, we have brought our inspectors from across all the 16 regions of the country. And so they are here to spend five days. Uh, they will go through the basic uh, rudiments of uh, inspecting tourism establishments. We also have the national security who will come in there and give them some tips on some of the security um, adherences that they need to be aware of at various tourism establishments. The COVID task force and the Ghana Health Service will also be here because now we have to more or less incorporate COVID protocols in the work that we do at the various tourism establishments. Uh, one of the key things that we need to do is to improve upon service delivery within the tourism sector. And to be able to do that, uh, quality assurance and service delivery team themselves have to be given the requisite skills and training. And so that is why under the Ghana Cares uh, Batapa project, the tourism component targets sector skills revitalization. And that sector skills revitalization involves training of various players within the tourism value chain. Today we are starting inward, in-house with the training of uh, tourism inspectors. They are the ones who visit the various tourism establishments to ensure that facilities are up to standard, to ensure that operators are obeying the laid down regulations that have been passed under the Ghana Tourism Act, Act uh, 817 of 20, 2013. And so that is the reason why we are having this training program, to ensure that they understand the requirements, the common defects that we always see every year as we go out, and how our operators can improve upon it. Uh, to do that, I think we are also embarking on not just the training of our inspectors, but several players within the value chain. Uh, taxi drivers at the airport, car rental companies and their drivers on product knowledge, um, frontline staff at the various tourism establishments. And so this is just the beginning of a comprehensive and sector-wide training program and so they will also be here and then the various defects that we have identified over the years I mean it keeps coming up disability friendly facilities uh, issues of customer service at the various uh, tourism establishments how we can ensure that facilities are kept at a certain basic standard we have our standards we have hotels that are five star we have those are four three two one and then also the budget and other guest houses they all don't have the same requirements so we want to equip our inspectors as they go out there to be able to understand that if you go to for example a two-star hotel these are the things that you need to look out for these are the soft and then the hard ones that you have to look out for the hard ones are the infrastructure the soft one are the services that they will offer at the facility and whether they meet in well, let's you know, delve into this matter proper because we're joined via Zoom by the president and founder of the Chamber of Customer Service, Yvonne Ohimakathe. Yvonne, we're grateful that you could join us on this program. What's your assessment of customer service delivery within our tourism sector? Charles, um, so it's Institute of Customer Service Professionals. Exactly. Um, good afternoon exactly. to everyone. Yes, that's fine. Um, I think it's a very, very good um, idea. Um, um, I would hope or we would pray that it moves beyond the idea. If you look at um, what happened during the virus, the coronavirus pandemic, um, you'd find that the tourism industry was the hardest hit. Um, before that, prior to that, in 2019, we enjoyed an inflow of tourism um, benefits when we actually launched the, um, um, Ghana, the, the year of return, sorry, 
we had a lot of people coming through and we were hoping that this will actually continue. But unfortunately, we had the, um, the pandemic takeover in 2020. And of course, we were hardly hit. We want to rise above what happened, especially in that particular industry. Because if you look at the value chain, as he was mentioning, there are so many people who are employed by this particular sector. Um, you have tall operators, you have hotels, you have lodges, you have transportation, even roads, the airlines themselves. There are so many. So it's important that they undertake that training. I am all for it. I am actually very happy that they've sat down to draw up a roadmap. But I think beyond the training, um, assessment and evaluations and monitoring is going to be what's important. Great. But juxtaposing this to the pandemic, which has become the new normal, what has been the situation pre and post COVID-19 from the customer service point of view? Right. So I'm um, just to read something to you. And this, this is um, something that Jumia Hospitality Report put out there. Great. And they're saying that this particular sector um, saw a key growth in the economy. They contributed about 8.5% of the GDP in 2018. That's right into 2019 when we also enjoyed our year of return growth. So, I mean, looking at that, you realize that we were actually doing very well. Now, if you look at today, and I don't have the Ghana figures, but I can give you Africa. So the African Union is actually estimating that um, 55 billion will be lost in travel and tourism revenues and 2 million jobs will also be lost. So there's no doubt about the effects of the pandemic. It's going to hit us and hit us hard. But I think just like other economies or other continents, um, we would have to re-strategize and restructure our, our, our strategies and draw up a proper roadmap of how we're going to recover from this. So it has happened, all is not lost. That's where I think customer service comes in because what we want to do is now go out there and be completely different. We want to go out there and create memories for people because that's what tourism does. Um, tourism, unfortunately, is not like banking where you can rely solely on certain things. For tourism, it has to do with the memory. It has to do with the experience they have with you mostly. And a lot of people would have to interface with human beings in order for that positive experience to be created. So... Yes, we've had a very terrible year and it's affected us based on the figures that we're seeing, but there's a way forward um, and other economies are trying to find their way. Well, finally, Yvonne, you have been coming out, you know, uh, quarterly, if not, you know, annually with matters regarding the index of, of customer service. And we have seen the impact that this has had on the value chain of service delivery in Ghana. But how best, you know, once again, from your perspective, can customer service be a driving tool for the tourism industry? Because if we're talking of tourism, for the tourists, it's not just Ghana coming to Accra. We're talking of booking the ticket wherever he or she finds you know, themselves, boarding the flight, getting onto the Kotoka International Airport, boarding that Uber, you know, all the way down to the hotel that he or she would want to, board, to, to, to you know, check in, in. So help us with the value chain of customer service. How can we maintain the full value chain without disrupting any with a poor customer service engagement? Right. I always say that, look, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just have to go back to doing the normal things and do them very well. So I want us to, I think going forward, we should ad adopt a more human centric mm. way of looking at things instead of just, you know, processes and operational and even sometimes customer centric. Mm. So looking or taking the human centric approach means we're looking in what first, which he also mentioned, people being trained the right way. Now, I'll always say that we've had some of our customer service issues emanating from even employing the wrong people. So if you're employing somebody into a, the tourism sector, if they're going to be a tour operator, work in a restaurant, in a hotel, if it's the Uber, these people are going to interface with the tourists that you want to impress. And so it's very important that you train them well. And it's very important they have the right attitudes, they have the right mindset, and they have the right skill set. So what they're doing now, it's is fantastic. That's what needs to be done. But we need to check and make sure it's being done right. That's the number one thing. Mm. Number two, we have to understand the customer's expectations. Things have changed. So two years ago before the pandemic, customers probably didn't expect, they, they expected much, but there were certain things they could overlook. Mm. Today, they will judge you if you don't have a sanitation station for them to even wash their hands. They will judge you if you don't have um, a cashless system, so they don't have to be pressing your POS or, or, or touching other things. So we have to re-innovate ourselves in a way that we're 
really catering to the customer's needs. So it's gone beyond the training. Like I said, we need to start looking at the people that we employ. We need to start looking at their mindset, invest in the skill set. And every single um, organization within the value chain, and I like that they also have inspectors who go around, they need to have a book where they're checking who has been trained and who hasn't. People need to be invested in. So you employ someone as a hotel, what type of training do you give them? You are supposed to give them mandatory training at least biannually. Mm. And I'm glad they would be able to check some of these things just to make sure that everybody is on point. Great. Apart from that, it's important that if they're going to set standards, they're able to follow and right. make sure that they reward and reprimand those who actually fall short. I think Great. once we're able to do that, we're not reinventing any rule. We're just doing these things that already exist better. All right. Yvonne, we're grateful for your analysis and your thoughts on this matter. She's president of the Institute of Customer Service Professionals there.